Okay. <laughs> okay, great. Um, good evening and welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Morro Bay Planning Commission. Uh, this is uh, Tuesday, January 7th, uh, 20, uh, 2020. It's odd to say that, but 2020. So uh, we're at the Veterans Memorial Building on 209 Surf Street. Uh, everybody's welcome to come down and participate. Uh, we have a quorum. Um, we're starting a little light with Michael being gone, but we'll we'll see what we can do. So <laughs> here he comes. So I'll call the meeting to order. We have a full a full compliment now. So um, at this point, I'd like to have a moment of silence, and we kind of. Uh, we might need that right now <laughs> at this point in time. So. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand, face the flag. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> okay, do we have any planning commissioner announcements? Anybody wishing to? Okay, so at this point we'll open the, the meeting here up for uh, public comment. If you have an item that's not on the agenda or, not, or wish to speak to the consent calendar, please come forward, state your name. Good afternoon. I'm Sean Green, uh, Morro Bay. Um, first, I want to thank you guys for your volunteer work uh, over the last year or longer for uh, some of you. Um, I know this is one of the more time-consuming uh, committees that you can be a part of, so uh, I certainly appreciate that. Um, Looking forward towards uh, this year in 2020, um, I, I just want to put in uh, uh, my two cents regarding how I'd love to see a planning commission uh, agenda appear and how the meetings might go uh, moving forward that's a little bit different than maybe how they've gone in the past, just because I think I'm one of the few people that watches all the meetings on YouTube or attends all the meetings and has something to say every once in a while. And it can be a little bit tedious and frustrating to see uh, meeting after meeting to have two projects and spending two hours each on those projects, often which are pretty straightforward. And the general sentiment of each of those meetings seems to be maintaining the status quo of the city rather than pushing the city forward. Um, I, looking at the, um, the overview of the Planning Commission uh, function on the city website, the first three of the four bullet points are to develop a general plan, maintain the general plan, and develop specific plans as they may pertain to the general plan. But the fourth bullet point says, periodically review the capital improvement program of the city for recommendations to city council. Excuse me. I would love f for uh, a Planning Commission agenda to include some forward-thinking item beyond the simple reactive uh, approach to a, a planning that a plan that has been submitted. If there are any opportunities to to seek out um, uh, 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 any kind of recommendation towards council or uh, take take Harbor Harbor Advisory Board for example, um, say what you will about our Harbor Advisory Board, but one thing they do do is push things forward at a crazy pace. And sometimes they're crazy ideas, but I really appreciate the fire that comes from that advisory board. And of all advisory boards, I do think that they are the ones that um, are pushing towards the future rather than uh, maintaining uh, an adequate status quo. So that's just my two cents. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. Would anybody else like to speak? I got notes. Uh, please come forward. Is this for an agenda item? So a case number. Okay, we'll uh, we'll be getting to that just shortly. Actually, but if you want to speak now, you know, no, go I'm, ahead and. I I don't know the process, so. Okay, uh, to, we'll probably get into that in about ten minutes, and you'll be able to see the staff report. Sweet. So then you might be better informed on your on your comments. Sounds good. And you'll have time to speak then. Okay, great. 
Okay, so um, this is general public comment period. Okay. Um, okay, I'll close close the public comment. Scott, would you like to have any comments? Because as it relates to the public, no. no. Okay. Well, I'll I'll state. Oh, there you go. So, um, you know, Mr. Green raises some, some, some valid points. Um, although the Planning Commission, you know, moving forward into this year is going to be reviewing lots of forward thinking <laughs> documents because we're bringing back all of the drafts for Plan Morro Bay and the, uh, yeah, so Plan Morro Bay, which is the general plan, local coastal program, as well as the zoning code. So you'll be looking at plenty of forward thinking documents and spending a lot of your meeting time, uh, hashing over those and preparing recommendations for city council on all of those documents moving forward into the new year. So um, you'll be doing that over the next six months. Okay, great. And I'll just, uh, you know, piggyback on that too is, you know, the, the, the plan, you know, is a lot is basically looking to the future and setting the plan for the future. You know, we kind of are a reactive board because we have to deal with the projects that are coming before us. But we do interject and try to move move things forward as much as we can in especially in the climate climate you know sphere so um, it's not everything I would like to do, but it's kind of we're kind of locked in by by what our regulations and what we can do on some things um, anybody else like, like to speak to that item? I was just also going to mention that we are, we are dealing with that forthcoming um, uh, vac uh, uh, vacation uh, vacation rental issue, and um, there was something else that came to mind. Too. Oh, and, and the uh, uh, residential design guidelines, which I imagine are somewhere in, in the works as well. So those are sort of forward thinking issues. Okay. Okay. So we have uh, the consent calendar. Yeah. I'd like to pull that. Okay, oh. we'll pull that. Just There's had a couple questions. One item, what, what would you like to discuss on it? Um, on the consent calendar, one thing that came up was item number four, 1930 Main Street, conditional use permit for new mobile home park with mixed vacation rentals and long-term rentals with manager's dwelling unit. Um, and sitting on the vacation rental subcommittee that's working on the ordinance, one of the things that had come up, and Sean's on that, he may um, remember, is we had talked about whether vacation rentals would be allowed in mobile home parks, assuming that most of them had CCNRs that prohibited that kind of subletting and that mobile home parks tended to be um, lower cost housing for people as well as some vacation homes for people. So just wondered how you know, as we're moving forward with this ordinance, which will come before this committee and then uh, city council as well, but whether that's something we should address, is this something that is a standard we should look towards? Well, I mean, it's something the committee should take up. Um, so it's, I mean, it's not something that's currently in the ordinance. So there's no prohibition against it. Okay. Um, so we would just license them like any other vacation rental as they came up and as spots became available out of the 250-ish that we have um, that are out there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's something that if there is a concern about it that it could be written into the ordinance that that's mm -hmm. someplace you don't want them or what have you. Mm -hmm. Certainly, I've seen ordinances that have um, prohibitions like that and then I've seen others yeah. that deal with vacation rentals that don't have any type of a prohibition in mobile home parks. So, it just okay. kind of depends. Okay, so that's something we probably ought to bring back to that meeting. Um, then there was another one that was just interesting to me, uh, number 17, the Morro Bay Recovery Group, that um, looks like they wanted to use the motel property that's there. Is there any status report on that or any, um, it looks like it's still under review, it was deemed incomplete at last June. Um, I mean, right. it's an interesting project, but I'm just curious if there's any... Um, they're in process. They received an incomplete letter from us, and uh, we're waiting on resubmittals. So that would take that 
off the market as lodging. And Which is become. potentially, you know, an issue and one of the things we have to look at. And then we'll be noticing the neighbors and um, by the some changes that we made to comply with state law, you know, these types of conversions to these types of facilities are required to be handled at an administrative level. Um, certainly they can be appealed to the Planning Commission and to the City Council, but, um, you know, state law kind of changed a while ago. And so we updated our ordinances. Um, a couple of years ago and I had to pick up that change mm -hmm. and uh, that's why it's a, mi a minor use permit. It would be a really valuable um, addition to the community, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't have any problems with seeing it, where it is, what it is, just curious about that. Um, and then just any update on um, both of the cannabis dispensaries I noticed. They're both on here. They, they are, yeah. They're in plan check. They submitted right before the uh, first of the year uh, mm -hmm. to get it under the, you know, last code cycle, going to a new code cycle now, mm -hmm. uh, the building code side of things. Um, they submitted their tenant improvement plans for both locations, the one on uh, Morabay Boulevard where ASAP used to be, and then the 1000 Quintana location, mm -hmm. which is where Megan's uh, organic market used to be located, if that rings a bell to anyone. Um, and then during plan check. Um, so all the plans have been routed out to the departments. I have the ones for planning sitting on my desk, and I'll be reviewing those. Uh, PD is reviewing a set of plans, fire, public works, building, right. so yeah. Okay. Sorry, I, th I thought I heard you say where Giuseppe's was. It's not where ASAP was. Did they switch? So no, no. ASAP is across. It was is a uh, is across from where uh, the theater. ASAP was across from the theater. Yeah, about the corner. That's where it is. Yeah, that's yeah. where it's at. Okay. That's where, that's where one, one is. Yeah. Market was. Okay, on Quintana. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Giuseppe's is up. Okay, yeah, yeah. What? Okay. Yeah, Any? that that was it. Okay. Any other items? Okay. Um, do we have a motion? Move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Get motion passes. Okay, this is, uh, we're on to item number B1. This is case CUP 19 15, and it's located at 1001 Front Street in Morro Bay. So, can we have the staff report? Yes, you can. Um, good evening, commissioners and residents of Morro Bay in the house tonight. Um, this item before you tonight is a special use permit application for the annual waterfront market at 1001 Front Street, and the applicant is Jolene Tench with the Slow Vendors Association. Um, so for those of you who may not be familiar with the waterfront market, um, it is an event that usually takes place between Giovanni's Fish Market and Stack's Wine Bar, 10 days a year, um, but this year is proposed to take place 15 days on weekends specified ahead of time. This special use permit will require administrative renewal each year, at which time the dates will be re-reviewed. The waterfront market will consist of 30 to 34 local vendors offering a mix of arts, crafts, information, food booths, and food trucks. The event will begin set up no earlier than 7 a.m. on permitted days, and cleanup will be completed no later than 8.30 p.m. on those permitted days. Oh, lost my PowerPoint. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Slide three. Great, thank you. Uh, this project is located in the waterfront and planned development and special treatment overlay zone just north of Embarcadero Road and south of Beach Street. This is a view of the project site as seen from the street. This location is occupied by many visitors serving commercials year round and the waterfront market will exist entirely within this existing private parking lot seen here. Um, so in the past, um, specifically in 2012, the Planning Commission approved Precise Plan Conditional Use Permit UP0284, and the Coastal Commission approved Coastal Development Permit CDP3-11-031 for dock improvements, an addition of an awning, expansion of a public seating area adjacent to Giovanni's, and approval for that parking lot. The proposed project the waterfront market will not conflict with the findings and conditions of approval for either of those past permits and all activity will be located outside of that required bayside lateral access area as you can see here. 
Um, in addition to those permits, this site has been issued various temporary use permits administratively for similar market activities. The waterfront market has received administrative permits for the last two years of operation. However, with the applicant's request to add five additional days and given the ongoing nature of the event, staff felt it more appropriate to require planning commission approval for, through this special use permit process. This is an image of the proposed site plan as shown next to an image from a past waterfront market event. According to the applicant, the purpose of this event is to open up a vending location to local businesses to grow and promote their legally establishes, established businesses in Morro Bay. The applicant will be requiring all vendors to have tents, tables, and weights to secure their tents. The objective is to maintain an organized and efficient market setup. These are the 15 proposed dates for the 2020 waterfront market. Um, and in addition, the applicant is requesting relief for the proposed waterfront market dates um, in the event that weather prohibits the market from operating safely. Um, the applicant is requesting the ability to cancel and reschedule for the next available weekend per director approval. This request is accounted for in planning condition two of the findings and conditions of approval. As conditioned, the, the proposal meets all requirements set forth in the city's general plan and local coastal plan and zoning ordinance. Um, a notice of this project was posted at the site and published in the Slow Tribune newspaper on December 27, 2019, and all property owners and occupants of record within 500 feet were notified of tonight's hearing. So with that said, it is staff's recommendation that the Planning Commission approve special use permit CUP 19-15, subject to the findings and conditions of approval outlined in resolution 01-20. Thank you. Okay, do we have any questions of staff? One. Okay. Does the uh, city have any, let me think about it, phrase this question. Um, what is the, how are the vendors determined? Is that strictly by the applicant, or is that does the city have any control over that? It's by the applicant and the Slow Vendors Association. They set it up. Okay. As um, part of their event package, is there a process for um, <coughs> any temporary directional or informational signage to? the event, from the event, around it, anything that, you know, are they allowed to post signs, say, at the various entrances to the city saying this way to the waterfront market? So our sign ordinance doesn't typically allow for off-site signage um, for events like that. Um, they would really only be able to post directional signage at the actual event. Um, and it's required that they post signage for where the bathrooms are and that sort of thing. Okay. Would it be possible to maybe put something at City Park? As uh, Willow indicated, our ordinance doesn't really allow off-site signage. <laughs> um, currently, that was, it would violate the city's sign ordinance. <laughs> Which we have the ability to amend. Yeah. <laughs> was that well, something? Well, well, and there's, and the Planning Commission actually has the ability also to, um, to deviate from the sign standards if you think mm -hmm. it's appropriate, meaning mm -hmm. our sign ordinance exist, existing one doesn't really address things like this, right? Um, and so uh, that's kind of the issue. It doesn't really have, you know, sign regulations old. It's over 30 years old, and w one of the reasons we're updating it. Um, and so it doesn't really account for things like this, but they're kind of unique. So part of it could be something along those lines, and if you wanted to allow something like that, I don't have an issue with it. Um, so we just included in the conditions of approval that they would be allowed to do that with, uh, you know, my approval. Um, so they, meaning show us the location of it, and we would condition it that it's removed at the end of the day for the event, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. right. so. I, I think there's probably a bigger issue, which I'll maybe address later, to do with all of our events and, and sort of the relationships between them that may or may not exist because we don't do any sort of, you know, I, I, this way I, to art in the park and that getting, way to the... I think we're getting but, past questions yeah. um, at this point. A so. question I had, and, and I know the standard for notification is 500 feet, but... It seems like something like an event which really affects a whole district of town or more. I mean, it certainly affects the Embarcadero, but it also affects old town businesses and residents all over town. I, I just wonder if there is any reason to have more than a 500-foot notification process. 500 foot is pretty big. Yeah. 
We send out a lot of notices. Um, okay. uh, you know, the, the requirement's three. Um, we exceed okay. that by quite a bit. And um, about three-ish years ago or whatever, we went, increased it to that number. Okay. Um, and we increased and changed the type of signage that we put out there, but we post the site. And we went mm -hmm. away from the little tiny 11 by 17 things that you couldn't see to the yeah. bright yellow board so people understood that. And not, we also, at that time, we also went to, the, to posting, you know, um, project sites in the city where building permits were happening the, with the orange sign, so everybody knew those were happening right. as well. So, I mean, we've been very successful with that. Good. Okay. Wow. okay. okay. Michael? <laughs> I'll borrow my colleague's mic. Um, well, uh, I, I, this is the first day of class, so I'm a little foggy here. Did, did you say where the bathroom locations are? Do they have Porta pots listed on here. Um, so there's a condition that they do, but in the past um, they have been using Giovanni's facilities um, and directing people there. Okay. Um, the other thing I was going to ask is, when I compare the plans, it's not clear to me are they anticipating the walkway moves through the vending area or is the walkway that exists as the right of way at the edge of the vending area so that you can go by without moving through the vending area? Um, it's, it, the vending area is going to be existing entirely within the parking lot. Um, okay. The access area is outside of that. So everything, when I look at this plan, mm -hmm. everything in this plan is inside the white space here. None of the vendors is impacting. Correct. Okay. And yeah, that's a separate um, plan from those older permits from 2012 that I mentioned. Um, I just included it as an exhibit, for example, um, to show the Bayside lateral access a little clearer. And was there any uh, actionable item from people complaining about bathroom access or or, or alternate facility <laughs> utilization <laughs> uh, from the last uh, iteration? Uh, we see no comments um, related okay. to this project. Okay, thanks. Okay. okay, at this point I'll open it up for public comment. We'll have the applicant uh, speak first and then the, then the public can, uh, will have their chance. And if the sm smaller members of our community would like to come in and and sit, they're, they're more than welcome. They won't disrupt it any more than we do. So, <laughs> okay. Um, so yes, we are the Waterfront Market and Slow Vendors Association. We have partnered with Giovanni for the last three years to basically do this market. It's been an amazing journey. We definitely had some kinks and bumps in the road to begin with, but you know, over this process, allowing with the temporary use permits and the special use permits, we've been able to grow and gain our knowledge that we know now. Uh, so we make sure that we're not obstructing you know, any traffic as far as foot traffic along the Embarcadero in any way, shape, or form. There's plenty of room to come in on the backside um, closest to Giovanni's where his um, basically where his, uh, the, the dumpsters are at. So there's a complete open access for public to walk in without having to feel forced to walk through the market area. It is enclosed in this little-ish area and the, the photo being used in here um, was actually being taken from Giovanni's restaurant up on that balcony just to kind of give you a good overview as to how we operate and how we look. Um, we have now 14-foot aisleways um, we just want our vendors and all of our, you know, family and friends and the community to come down and we want to be able to operate within a safe environment. You know, we've definitely endured some big heat and some winds back in 2017, so hence why we have requested a weather clause because 105 degree weather when finding out you were pregnant with a little one <laughs> was not fun at all. So, um, you know, we've just wanted to give back to Morro Bay. I've been a vendor at the local farmer's market for the last, since 2014 or 15 is when I started JoJo's Candle Company, so almost seven years ago. Um, so, yes, I'm a mom. I am an entrepreneur business owner, and now I have this little event project called our Waterfront Market, and we appreciate it. Right. What we do. Okay, thank you. We'll open it up for the rest of the public. If there's anybody wishes to speak, Sean, and then if we, if we have questions, we'll bring you back okay. back to the podium. 
Hi, Sean Green, Morrow Bay. Uh, I'm inclined to support anything that uh, brings action and activity to uh, the city of Morrow Bay. Uh, but I do think this is an opportunity to uh, once again um, mention that this parcel is um, possibly, arguably, the most important single parcel in this entire city. Uh, and it also has a well-established history of blocking coastal access. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, we should keep in mind that there is required coastal access on the south side against the water and the north side against the water. Um, just taking a tour with me for a sec, walking north uh, from um, Centennial Parkway, um, you walk right along the waterfront and dead end right at the Giovanni's line, where, where if you would otherwise not know and you're a tourist coming to town, you would assume that the Embarcadero ends at that point. It deters probably 30% of foot traffic. And I'm not sure why we continue to allow the line delineators to be in that exact position rather than diverting them uh, eastbound along the Giovanni's business. Um, coming from the other direction, uh, coming from the north side and, and dock side direction, um, that gate, there's a large gate that is required to be open during daylight hours, and it is almost never open. When it is open, there are tractors, vehicles, other things blocking the walkway from the north gate to the south gate, and that's just not okay. That really creates a roadblock when that really should be a hub at the center of town. Um, so I just wanted to mention that, um, and even this morning I went over uh, to look at the north ga uh, side gate, and there's a sign on it that's like a handmade sign, uh, probably by the proprietor, set, that says under construction, opening back up on December 26th. And it's January 6th. It wasn't a beautiful planning commission sign that said permit, construction, all that. Uh, so it seems the self-policing of coastal access at that parcel is not quite working, so it might be time to add caveats to things like this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Does anybody else wish, wish to speak to this then? Okay, uh, do we, we'll leave the public comment period open, and uh, do we have questions for the applicant? Okay. Could, uh, I'm sorry, uh, we've got some questions for the applicant. Would you? Okay. <laughs> okay, so Susan? So I noticed that um, the proposed event weekends cover a lot of events, uh, same events that are happening in town. So we have three Art in the Park days, Memorial Day, Labor Day, and the 4th of July. Um, and then also later in September and October, we have the Avocado Festival and the Harbor Festival. So having something on the same weekends. Um, and, and there's nothing in August. And I was wondering, um, was there a reason to pick those particular weekends just because they kind of piggyback on those other events? Or is it possible to spread things out so that we are, again, creating you know, more continual activities and events happening through the summer? Sure. So the way we see it is that on those off days, it's not necessarily that we don't want them. Mm -hmm. But we would take them all if we could. right? But we're only limited to 15 days. Now, of course, your major holidays are the highest traffic times for the town. So to be able to do capture as much revenue for my small guys that are all self-supported, it's best to play with the strengths instead of trying to cover the bases. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we do that. Now, if we had extra days, we would continue all through summer because it is a busy time and it's a, a good flow of revenue and keeps people on their feet. Mm -hmm. It's one other thing to do. When you come down to Morro Bay, you, a lot of what we see from the traffic is they, most of them will go to the rock. They'll park there and they'll walk their way in. That's where we, we capitalize and sell in as much as we can. And we keep it a family-friendly environment, dog-friendly dog environment. And, mm -hmm. You know, we make it um, a great uh, a welcome to Morro Bay. Mm -hmm. And it's just the right times. Now, if we can get every day, we'll take it. <laughs> okay. Um, I did talk to about eight different stores in the area. Um, and there was a, you know, a, a lot of support. A um, few people who had some concerns. Um, one, again, just a little minor thing in terms of signage. They said that often people um, who are getting alcohol probably at Giovanni's coming through the event and going out on the sidewalk. So maybe just a sign 
inside the gate that says no alcohol beyond this point, something like that. Um, um, and that's not really your problem. Yeah, I think yeah, it's I more of the restaurant's problem. But yeah, do they serve alcohol at that restaurant? I don't even know. Must have beer. Yeah. They have beer. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Sure. Um, yeah, and, since, um, and then, so do your are your vendors primarily handmade crafted, or is yes, there commercial so the, as well? We've actually built a, a whole process of elimination on who's allowed in the market. Mm -hmm. Well, first and foremost, we have to have a full market. In order to have a full market, we have to take more than than we need to sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so we have a, a process where it's local handmade first, so more obey, and then we start moving our way outside to the rings, all the way out to the state or even out of state if need be. But those people come last on our approval list. Now, as we grow out, we grow from your handcrafted to your packaged. Um, you get into um, resellers, um, you know, your everyday run of the mill market vendors. I mean, the, every walk's life. But we do have a stringent policy in how to approve them and get them through the process. So we always have a full market, but as the popularity of, has grown with the event, Mm -hmm. we're starting to see more and more local vendors come out mm -hmm. and more new people trying to get into our market in order to get their spot and, and become more of a community. Mm -hmm. It's pretty been a neat ride so far. Yeah. Very cool. Pretty busy. Um, parking. Parking. It's always an issue in this that town. Is Even more when it's big, not an issue. That is the thorn in this lion's I, tail, know, man. The, <laughs> <laughs> the one... Um, I, I did the um, Sea Glass Festival okay. last year. So, you know, they, you get this whole packet of things that they want you to do and not do, and you can have this and not that. Mm -hmm. And um, perhaps with the packet, even though, you know, you can't necessarily police it and follow through, but sure. you could have with your vendors uh, offload your stuff park at the far end of Triangle Park, something like that. Yeah. So they're, you know, and it's yeah, kind of a no-brainer, but... Yeah, we definitely suggest that. Okay. I mean, just like Morro Bay, anything in the, the coastal district, any employee that's around the area, they always shoot for the easy parking as early mm -hmm. as they can get there. And that fills up no matter how it is. So every business has the same object to tackle with people sure. that they're working with. Absolutely. So what we do is uh, primarily is no parking in front of the coffee pot because we don't want to interrupt his business. Mm -hmm. um, and then we try to clear all the sidewalks around us. And I'll bring this up at every meeting we have in order to make sure that they start adhering to a better uh, parking mm -hmm. schedule. Because there isn't any room in this town for parking. So we got to do our best to get more people in. Right. Well, and you want your customers to park. Oh, sure. So that the oh, yeah. guy. Yeah, it's um, definitely a day trip in, in Morro Bay. And have you um, been in touch with the city's tourism bureau in terms of getting on their website? They have um, a pretty good calendar yeah, of Yeah, my wife handles all that. They okay. talk about it. They share marketing ideas, and they, mm -hmm. they move. A, they work pretty well together. I don't know the exacts of that. I'm only the uh, the ground half of the, the game, mm -hmm. but she has all the paperwork. Mm -hmm. And... Okay. Uh, yeah, they have a great relationship so far. Good. Okay. Yeah. I think that's all I have for right now. Okay. Jesse? <clears throat> so forgive my ignorance. I'm not an entrepreneur, so I'm sure. going to have to speak from um, my limited experience. Mm -hmm. And I, I, don't, I don't mean to criticize at all. Sure. I think what you do is great. I'm totally for it. Awesome. <laughs> so, preface. Yeah. Um, if, I have, if I hear any complaints from... from Customers, I guess uh, you know the, the folks that are strolling around. Is it's that it's the same, it's the same goods being sold over and over. We do try to <clears throat> mix and match our different vendors. Uh, sometimes you'll get some standard vendors that will they'll pay for the whole show because it's pretty much how they make a living, and so they'll they'll take it. And they're all locals, so I mean I'm all about that. And as far as everyone else, everyone has different schedules during the holiday season, so we have to fill in as best we can. And um, we do have, as more and more vendors come in, it's kind of like right now, I think it's roughly about 50% are returning, but the other 50 um, come from all over the place. Um, it's nice to have a solid core of vendors that you tr grow with because there's never any faults with, you know, moving cars in and out of the block or, you know, people. And it's blown away because they know the program, they know how it works. The other 50% is like a wild card. You never know what you're doing. But by having the, the localized vendors there that are there on a regular basis helps us mitigate any type of risk and lot. I can manage a lot more with a solid crew. Uh, but we definitely want more local vendors. Like, if you make it, bring it. Well, let's sell it. Like, I'll help you. Let's go. Okay. And then the food vendors. So I saw there was two trucks allowed per event. 
Yes. Um, is it the same two? Or are you rotating two? Um, no, we have, we have multiple. Uh, we've had anything from um, Asian Fusion to grilled cheese to, I mean, it just depends on who schedules what. A lot of times during the summertime, the snow cone guy will be there. Um, it's less mess uh, on the lot because it's mostly ice and water. Um, and then as for those food vendors, we only usually have two, not necessarily, not necessarily both trucks, but we'll have one in a tent and one in a truck. And that's about it. We limit that because we don't want to impact any of the restaurant businesses with selling food. And we are giving multiple uh, different um, uh, vendors different choice. I mean, we're giving multiple opportunities, yeah. right? So we're not just you know cornered into those same two. Oh, absolutely, over and over. absolutely. Okay. And it really depends on schedule. I mean, uh, we'll, we'll talk about because it, it, this does make sense. I mean, you are making a lot of sense to me. So we'll look into see if we can rotate our vendors a little better. I, I'm not no, an entrepreneur, a, no, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, it's just a great idea, you know. So we're open to anything, you know. So if there's something to be talked about, let's do it and talk it out, and we'll see if we can even get better. I mean, that's the goal, right? You know, not just get stuck in a rut. I had one community person ask me about, um, and and they were really talking about all the different events we have in town, but working towards a zero waste okay. um, event planning is that can that be part of? You know, basically setting up recycled bins and oh, sure. food waste oh, sure. you know, that can go in a separate Yeah, way. I mean, right now we use, utilize the, uh, the recycling bin at Giovanni's lot for all the trash cans that we manage on the property. And so we dispose of it properly on our end. But, I mean, if there's a, a, a citywide effort, we'll be glad to join. Okay. Michael? <laughs> oh, no. Technology here. Just to be clear, when you say the food trucks, are they displacing the 10 by 10 tents or are they on the street? Are you talking no, about. No, we have a special designated location, and if I have my map with me, which. Oh, there it goes. So outside of the uh, front street side, there's a black area that says information tables. Oh, okay. Um, we utilize that space for the food truck. So we still have like a 14 to 16 foot gap for walking. So when we see the three street parking pieces on the plan, those are meant to remain public spaces? Yes, those are public spaces. During the event? Absolutely. Thanks. Good. Joseph? I'm, I'm glad Michael brought that up. I, the, the sidewalk there is ridiculously narrow and yes. there's obstructions of utility poles. And I was wondering if perhaps this might be the occasion where just for those events, we post those parking spaces and perhaps even cones to allow families to you know, walk in what would otherwise be the parking spaces. So there's no competition between moving traffic and no safety issue and just a broader thoroughfare. I, sure. mean, I take it you would like that. Oh, right? actually, actually um, what we found out is because there is the gate behind Geo's where the last gentleman uh, commented on that uh, people could flow through better in that zone, uh, and it is public space, but we don't want to use public space as our, like, come on in. You know, right. we don't want to use that. At, that's just there. But on the front, by opening up the lot and getting rid of the cars and adding that 14-foot walk space, when that traffic, the walking traffic, hits Giovanni's gate, it opens up from 3 feet to 14 feet, and they choose to walk through the market, and all their passes is one truck, and it actually opens it up. I think it's even better for safety. I mean, the best you can do from there is take the spots, but this town needs them. <laughs> okay. Um, any other questions for your applicant? Okay. Uh, have you looked at any other venues? Oh, yeah. Okay. Pretty much all of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, Okay, thank you. Then we'll close public comment at this point. Bring yeah. it back to oh, the commission. Right. Well, unless you guys have more we'll time, bring it back up. We if can we hang out all you want. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah, okay, um, at this point, I've got uh, some f severe problems with this. Not with not with the event, but with the location. Like our public comment said, there the 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 owner of the location has just thumbed their nose at our, any of the conditions that we've put on their property. The, uh, I'm down there on the Embarcadero almost every morning, and there's not been one morning that I've seen where the, where the 
public access is open and operable at the appropriate time. Mm -hmm. And most days it's not even open at all. Down there today, there's, um, although there was construction, they had, they had coned off the construction equipment where they easily could have coned off an area to keep the, the, uh, the access open. There, it was not open. There's permanent storage, you know, there's item, there's containers that have been stored there for, for weeks and weeks at a time that are blocking the access way. And the city has not done any code enforcement on it. And there's, there, I don't want to, I want to bring this up to the commission because I do not want to, to, um, allow any other events or to 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 have any more benefit to the property owner when they're not following through on the conditions that they promise to uphold you know they've got they've got conditions on their CUP and their coastal development permit that that they have never once you know followed through on and taken their um, their obligation seriously. So it's either we have, you know, I hate to say this, we either have rules for everybody or we have rules for a few people. And if some people are, think that they're special and can get away with it, then, you know, then they will get away with it. And so, um, you know, I would like to see the, you know, their conditional use permit, if that's appropriate, be reevaluated and brought back to do the commission. I would like to see their, I would like to see some, basically I'd like to see them red tagged. If they don't open up the public access, the businesses should be shut down that we've, we've allowed to go in there. So uh, to me, this is serious. So let's open that up for discussion. I also, each, each time I'm in that area, I make a point of walking in that area. And, and just last week, I, I found the same situation where it was closed to the public and for no, what I thought, good reason. However, I'm stating the obvious. I, I'd like not to punish this applicant, yeah. the lessee, for the sins of the landlord. So mm, that's, that's my dilemma, yeah. you know. So, uh, Michael, or anybody else wish to speak to this, <laughs> this part? Yeah, I, I guess my concern is uh, I, I don't dispute anything you're saying. Um, I, I was wondering, is that something that reaches the level of that's a, a non-agendized? Can, can we tie that action to this piece that's in front of us? So, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a little bit separated, which is um, I, I had this conversation with, with, uh, with Chair Lou earlier, and my suggestion to, to him was to bring it up to the Planning Commission because this is an issue. It's ongoing. Planning Commission has the ability to review CUPs. There are conditional use permits. They're allowed to be brought back. Um, this one has an issue, obviously. I'm, I'm happy to do that. To bring it back, if you know, I get some concurrence on the commission, uh, I'll uh, you know reach out to Mr. DeGuermore uh, and uh, see his availability to come in here and have a discussion with the planning commission as to why he's not maintaining it open. I would also note that he's in violation of his lease by not maintaining that as open. Um, so he's got a couple of issues. Not only is he in violation of his CUP by not having it open when he's during the hours that he's supposed to, but he's also in violation of the coastal development permit and the lease that he that the city holds with him for the docks. So. Um, those are those are issues, and we probably need to have a conversation with them if it is indeed closed as much as was indicated um, by the commission. So happy to do that, um, you know, and and we can probably have it agendized within the next couple of months, maybe in February. But it's, that's not actionable on this, though. That's a separate. Is it is. I mean, this agenda? one this has you know requirements that the, the public access remain open and, and those types of things, but. It's, it's separate. This is not a. This is not like sometimes you see when we bring um, items before you, uh, we'll amend previous conditional use permits, right, uh, on the waterfront. But this is a special use permit because it's it's a temporary event that shows up. So it's kind of a separate process. Um, I think we have all of the hooks we need to make Mr. DeGuermore um, comply. Um, meaning we have his leases and uh, you know on the waterfront. I mean on the waterfront portion of it, the land area is actually not part of the lease. 
portion of it, I guess, is, but most of the buildings and stuff are not. Those are privately held land. But I guess my, my comment would be, uh, you know, my, my own personal prejudice is, is micro businesses in a unique place like this, we should do everything we can to be helping them grow and stabilize and uh, uh, have the ability to uh, get out into the community like this. I'd, I'd hate to see this stopped because of a problem with another tenant that's not technically part of this. I'm happy to attach it if that's appropriate, but I, I don't want to see this stopped because that person is not meeting their obligation. But I, I think if, if I can if I can interject here, I think Chair Lord's got a point. I mean, we have we have the triangle lot, we have the area near the stacks, we have uh, plenty of areas that we could encourage these types of businesses to do what they're doing. It doesn't have to be there. And this, I mean, we're we're prop, we're, we're proliferating a, a, a problem that's I mean. It's it aggravates everybody in the city. I mean, and then we're just basically saying, okay, well, keep going with your your non-compliant behavior, and we're just going to basically award, reward you by allowing you to continue your special your special use permit. I I think it's it's not out of line at all to ask them to come back. And I mean, this is until May, so we have several months to get Mr. Uh, well, to Gilmore. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not I'm not disputing we should talk to Mr. De Garamore. I'm disputing whether we should stop this. It, yeah, I, I mean, you know, if you want my preference, my preference would be to act on this standalone, and then we we, we review the conditional use permit um, because I I think that's valuable. Uh, I think we have all the hooks that we need to make Mr. De Garamore comply. Um, if Mr. De Garamore doesn't like the fact that we're making him comply, he can certainly apply for amendments to his permit. But during that time frame, we have availability to, one, review him and let him know that, no, you're not operating in, in the manner consistent with the conditional use permits that were issued to you or the coastal development permits, for that matter. Um, you know, I think we'd probably hold off before contacting the Coastal Commission about it and see if we can't resolve it on our own. Um, because I think we do have enough hooks to make that happen. Um, so I mean, I'm, I'm comfortable that, that we can g gain compliance. And, and one of the review, and part of the review by the Planning Commission can involve the removal of the gate. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm, you know, I mean, that can be the conversation that we have. I, I, I don't know. I, I think that was kind of the, one of the simple things to me is, uh, Chair Lure explains, I eat breakfast down there all the time, and every time I look over there, the dang gate's closed. Um, and I was like, well, we could just remove the gate. Yeah. And the other thing is the other two gates are open. Yeah. Correct. You know, continually. Yeah. I mean, they're open yeah. at dawn, when, but, the, but the public access gate is always closed. Yeah. So, so go ahead, Jess. I, I, you know, certainly with respect to my experiences, it's kind of anecdotal. So do we need to start you know, keeping a journal of some sort, walk by the place that the gate? Otherwise, it might simply be a... He said, she said. No, I mean, I, I, I can read. I mean, I would, I'll reach out to Mr. DeGamore and talk to him. I mean, I can, we can do a couple of things. All right. We can, you can have me reach out. I can sit down with Mr. DeGamore and explain what's going on and the fact that any time the gate's closed and it's not open at 730 when it's supposed to be open, any other time he closes it, he has to go through me to close it. I mean, that's fine. And then if it's closed and he doesn't go through me, well, we have a problem then. And we can issue fines and citations based on that. I can, you know, I mean, I can, we can drag him to city council and, and, and discuss it in relation to his lease because that's a violation of his lease. <laughs> you know, he needs, to be, he needs to stay in compliance with the permits that are issued on the property. I think, I think, I think Mr. DeGarmore will come into compliance if he understands that we're paying attention to all these things. I don't think it'll be as much of an issue. Um, you know, once he realizes, you know, this is, this is a problem, it's an issue that's cropped up and that we're aware of it, then I'm sure we'll gain compliance. Well, with all due respect, we've been talking about this for over a yes. year or yes. so, and it is it doesn't seem like anything's happening. So we need two things to happen, you know, for him to be in compliance. We need the removal of the gate, you know, on the north end, and we need an eight-foot an eight foot access, clear access path on the south end that's clearly delineated and designated as coastal access. Right now there's three signs that you can see from the walkway that say order here, line, pick up order here, and line up this way, and not one coastal access sign that you can see from there. And that, you know, there is a bullard, there's a pipe bullard blocking that in the middle with chains going both directions. So, we, so they're required to have a delineation between the line and the public access way. I, I have to go back and review the plan. Yeah. That, that came from Coastal. Um, so we would have to go back and, and review that. Happy to do that as part of this process. Um, I can, so I was 
I got sidetracked there for a minute, sorry. Yeah. So H happy to um, do two things for you. Um, if you want, I can reach out and sit down with Mr. DeGuermore and discuss all of this with him. And then I can bring that back to the next planning commission meeting under a business item to discuss it with you. Um, at that point, we can have a discussion about whether the planning commission wants to bring back the conditional use permit for compliance. Can, um, Scott, can, can we do that as a new business item and put that on the agenda for the next? Yeah, yeah, that's, what I'm, next? yeah that's what I'm saying. I'm, I figure I can, between now and then, I can reach out to him and talk to him. Okay. And then we can put it on there for a discussion item, um, and we can move forward like that. Yeah. Then I with think the, we with can... concurrence. I mean, I want you to... After we're maybe done with this item, you'll make a motion and a, and a second yeah. and have everybody vote to do that. So yeah, yeah let's we'll, let's handle that after we deal with with this item. I I'm firmly ready to stop this item in its tracks to get compliance, but I think let's see what we can do about getting compliance without you know hindering this item from going forward and hurting hurting them. Sure. But and I think we have time between now and May, where, where we could close this down if we need to, the CUP. Chair, if so, I may uh, yes. offer this, and what if we just continue this for till next meeting? I mean, it's only two weeks. Well, we, we do have other items on that agenda, um, so. Yeah. But I mean, if we're, if we're serious about trying to get compliance, yep. maybe that would show the, our, our, the, seriousness, the seriousness of our intent. Okay. Well, I mean, rather than, rather than disapproving for, I mean, you know, so, the chairs. So I understand that this is a special use permit. You have the same ability with a conditional use permit that you have with a special use permit. You can bring it back for re-review before they ever start executing on it, you know, if you don't get satisfactory, you know, resolution to the CUP issue. I, I don't want to penalize these folks, and I don't want to penalize the small, the small vendors. I think, they're, I think they're actually, you know, they're doing something good. But I think, you know, in two weeks, if we don't get, if we don't get any response or if we don't get a you know viable response we can shut her you know then we can look at shutting everything down and whether it takes the coastal commission to do that you know i'm willing to reach out to them so because they're definitely not in compliance so um okay where does everybody else stand on this uh, susan well on on that i'm in agreement i wondered if we could have a little more discussion about the dates okay um partly because um Oops. Let's continue. Let's continue on the polling. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Michael, where do you, where do you sit on? <laughs> well, I, I actually uh, uh, agree with the applicant that I think they have strength in building up their their um, potential uh, public by being aligned with some of the other events. Um, I I think that. Uh, let's, uh, that Michael, that actually let's, helps. let's let's stick to. Do we want to move forward with this item, continue this oh, item? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought or, you were talking about the dates. And then we'll, we'll talk about the no, dates. No, I'd like to that. separate it. I'm, I'm perfectly happy to agendize something about uh, the, the other project and have it come back. I, I'd, okay. I'm, I would like not to see this held up. The review of their C CUP and CDP. Uh, Joseph, where do you stand? Uh, likewise, I, I'd like not to see the, the applicant's uh, application held up. I, I think we can deal with the issue of the landlord in, a, in an effective fashion without complicating it with complicating okay. there so let's deal you know, i was trying to get you from that cancel this thing today i appreciate <laughs> and i and i and to yeah. tell you the truth both you know i was ready to come in today to to say we're stopping everything and not going to approve anything until they until they fix it but you know i'm moving towards the situation where you know let's deal with this this application and then we'll deal with the, the non-compliance after this, and we'll discuss that after, after this. Okay, so let's talk about, Susan, let's talk about dates. <laughs> um, so I don't know how busy the Harbor Festival was, and that is more at that end. The Avocado Festival's at the other end was quite busy. So just thinking in terms of traffic patterns for that whole waterfront, when those events start and stop, whether it creates um, almost too much mm -hmm. for the town to handle. Um, in terms of, and this is just from how merchants feel, talking to different people in all parts of town, holiday weekends in a tourist town can be the best time to introduce yourself to new customers because you have a lot of new people who are going to come to town anyhow because it's a holiday weekend. So, um, 
And the same kind of thing with events. You know, we, we all have this mixed love affair, hate affair with big events happening in town because it does tend to pull your customers away. Um, I like really good arts and crafts events in town. Um, and I like the idea that you have art in the park up at one end of town and you can create this flow down to the waterfront for other events and other things that are happening. I think that's a real positive. And I can certainly see the advantage of piggybacking. Um, it's, it saves you a whole lot of money and promotion to just have it the same weekend as something like the Avocado Festival that has a huge promotion budget. Um, at the same time, I see this you know, whole month of August with nothing Nothing interesting, new, exciting happening on, on the waterfront. So is there an opportunity there to, you know, pull in at least one weekend um, for something else that could be a draw to people, something else that shows up on the city website? I don't know if anybody's looked at it, but the tourism site actually is doing a pretty good job of tracking and calendaring in events. It's a little wonky, but... There's a lot that can go on in town and a lot that I think visitors look at. So I, I guess going all the way into October, I, I don't know, maybe, but I would, I would prefer to see the calendar adjusted to have some, something happening in August as well. That's just me. Um, I don't have a problem with the dates. I mean, uh, I have to defer to, to Susan here. She's the entrepreneur of the group. So, I mean, if she's, if she's thinking that's a better idea, I mean, I would want to listen for sure. Uh, but I got to think that they kind of have an idea of what works best for them as well. So I'm kind of in the middle. I don't know. I don't. Joseph? Yeah, I mean, that's what I, that's what I thought. I thought Su Susan's input made sense, but I, I wouldn't want to impose that on somebody who had decided otherwise if, if, if they have an opinion on that and are in accordance, I have no problem. But okay. and, and I was also wondering if you, if you were suggesting that we take the initiative to add another weekend. I don't think I'd want to add one, just change. So, and, it, you know, again, it's, it would be something that would be something to try out and see, does that mean you did boost those weekends or did it not work as well? I mean... Just an opportunity to play around with a little. Michael, you got the mic. Uh, I I don't uh, claim to have wisdom in terms of the the capacity of the vendors to add or or change times. I I, I like to think what was brought was a good faith effort to understand where they thought they could have the most impact in their economic flow. So uh, that's I'm I'm happy with what they have proposed. Okay, I. Th Maybe what we can do is we can reevaluate this after the after the first year and see if there's another problem. See if other dates would work better. I could see, you know, it, they're picking the. Of course, they want to have the dates where you have the largest the largest crowds here. But maybe for the city, it might be better to have the dates where this exactly. where you're attracting more people in to come in. Right. We have a lot of and, businesses that actually have brick and mortar stores in town. Right. That maybe losing traffic on those really busy, busy weekends. Right, so. especially the restaurants or uh, the restaurant, you know, so. Could the, uh, could the vendors get, for example, could they get a, a booth at the Avocado Margarita Fest in lieu of a, a booth here? I mean, because it seems like everybody and anybody comes to that thing. I think the brick and mortar stores want you to come to the store. No, I'm saying, but like the vendors that are, that are at this event. Oh, yeah, they, ab they, absolutely. They, and actually a lot of, a number of these vendors um, leave the downtown uh, community and farmers market on Saturdays to do these events, so that actually lessens that. You know, we we have a lot of great little small sort of mom and pop businesses, um, but there is that sort of limited number. So, like you said, sometimes you have to go beyond that um, to to pull people from out of the area. But I I do notice when we have these um, waterfront markets the downtown or old town farmer's market um, shrinks considerably. So yeah, they, the, I think the, the vendors tend to choose which one works best for them. Okay. So Susan, have you 
thought of an alternative schedule or do you want to go with this for a year and and reevaluate it and have it come back to us within the you know after a year and check check the dates at that point I'd be really interested to see um, just switching maybe one of those dates that's a holiday weekend with some weekend in August, because you also have, um, it's a Father's Day weekend, which isn't any really big holiday one way mm -hmm. or the other, so it's sort of an off weekend, and then you'd have something to compare how it went during the big major holiday weekends versus okay. let's, just random one. I don't know. So let's open that up to public comment. Would you like to... It may not work. You know, you've heard the, you've heard the discussion. Well, in the last the last uh, weekend before the school starts again, you know, that's sometimes kind of a holiday anyway. Yeah. So, you know. all right. sure. I would love to hang out with you guys all day and just talk this out. It's yeah. so much quicker. Um, as far as the dates, we would love to take on more dates. We were veterans in the vending game. Uh, we're, we're applying it all to local. We built the structure from the ground up. I've invested a ton of money out of my own company and business to make sure this is done right. The whole thing with public access and geo and all that, that that's cool. But when it comes down to uh, what we're doing, as far as the dates, we've done them all. We've done them in every city around the county. We've hit every big show, little show. We've had the highs and lows no matter what. So as far as like uh, August, of course we would do August. We would love to. But we can't throw the rest of those days to the, on the ground. If you want to give us more days, we are only at 15 days. We can handle more days. People need work. You know, we can take it. Um, just, but that's on you guys if you guys want to grant us or however that works of more days. Because we would love to show you everything. I have data tracking that I've been working on for a long time. I run a national marketing company, and I, I do this pretty much full time. And I got to apply it to a local trade, which was freaking awesome. And I want, I want to see this thing grow. We can do so much more, but it will definitely take your guys' help. And, you know, Giovanni's lot is a good one. And I can guarantee you, though, that coastal access will be looking pretty and wide open <laughs> every single day we're down there. I'll guarantee you that. And I'll be walking through. I, and you know what? I might even get a greeter to give you a, a lay <laughs> okay. or something. You know, whatever okay. we got to do. Great. Thank you very much. Awesome. Okay. We'll close public comment again. So, um, Scott... What about adding a test date in August? I, I don't, I mean, if you wanted to add another weekend, that would be go from 15 to 17 days. It's not a big deal to me. Didn't seem like they were real interested in losing something to trade out for August. Certainly the commission could impose that if three of you agree to that. Um, I think maybe the, you know, the compromise there is to give them two additional days. They have 17 and um, they have, we have them report back on how their August weekend went. I would, I would want to defer to Susan. I think she's, she's right that, you know, we're taking away from brick and mortar businesses every time we do these. And, you know, 15 days is already, you know, I don't want to say impactful, but it's, it's, it's not, not impactful, you know, so. Yeah, I guess I wouldn't want to <laughs> risk the wrath of certain businesses by, by adding more, you know, okay. it's more if there is an adjustment, so. Okay, so uh, let's, let's wrap this up. Let's, let's. Where, okay, Joseph. Again, does, does anybody th think my, my thought about the, the parking, particularly I, for people coming from the north and the parking lots in the north part of the market of walking down? Well, I, would, I, would, I was going to suggest that on the parking that we require the, all the vendors to park to, to park in the dirt section of the triangle lot. Oh, no, no. My, my thought was, again, it was, it was oh, that reference the, to the narrow uh, sidewalk. On um, vacating the, 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 the mothers yeah. with the strollers and the people. And that, particularly that... You, 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 you want to anger people? Yeah. Definitely block off the parking. Take a <laughs> I, would, I would caution the commission against suggesting that, and we'd have to run that through public works as well. Uh, there's, there, there's issues related to having that be the path of travel. Um, Accessibility. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I, I'll My soapbox. <laughs> yeah, I, I would have to. Okay. okay. Plus, we're going to have... Uh, you know, a big, wide public access along the coast, so we're going to have plenty of accessible, <laughs> accessible walk. At least, for, at least for two days. At least for 15 days. Um, okay, so let's... Uh, so where do we sit on requiring the vendors to, to park, you know, on the dirt, basically? Create? I think it's always good just to make that suggestion, like I said, yeah. in their packet. You know, they, they will or won't do it. That's it's, just the way people are, but at least you've put it there that they're supposed to put it in their heads, park somewhere else. And if it's a condition, it will be 
it will be put on it will be put in the packet. Mm -hmm. So otherwise, it might get lost in the. So I, I think that's easy to condition. So I would suggest that the condition be that the applicant provide you know materials to the vendors, um, directing them you know yeah. to park right yeah. in there as opposed to. The condition being they will park there because yeah, that's won't. unenforceable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. That, that, yeah. I agree with that. Okay. Is that, and we have yeah, everybody you, thinking that's a good uh, addition? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Okay. So we'll add that. Okay. Oh, and what about the weather clause? Anybody? I mean, we may end up with August if we have a heat wave <laughs> in July. <laughs> I think that's, I, I think it's I fair. think it's fair. I mean, we could have yeah. a freak hurricane yeah. or something, so. Oh, God. Yeah. Could happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think I think the commission's good with that on that condition. Yeah, the project's already conditioned that way. Okay, yeah. All right. Uh, do we have a motion? So we, are we actually conditioning this other than what's already? I didn't hear any. No, we'll 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 deal with this as it stands, pre freestanding, and then we will go. The next topic is going to be to to review the CUP and the CDP for. Okay. So we have the we have the one change condition, which is related to the direction to have the vendors park offsite right. at the triangle triangle lot. You that was haven't the only one. you haven't covered the we're going to switch out what days? No, I don't think we're going to we're not okay. going to switch out. Okay. The days. Okay. Good. All right. I think we're good on that. Okay. And then, but we, I would like to see a presentation at the end of the year of, you know, of you say you have uh, analytics. Prove it. <laughs> so, so if you could do a presentation at the end of the your last date. What cars on the street too? I mean, you guys want? Yeah, would we'll, we'll just come before the commission and, and let us know how it went. So, so I would want to amend the conditions of approval um, to include that. Uh, if I can get uh, some head nods, that that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Sure. It's a report. report that's a good idea, actually, for yeah. for temporary you know events like this. I think it's a good idea. So. Okay. Okay. Ready? Ready? Yep. Agree. Okay, so I move that uh, the commission adopt CUP. Is it CUP or SUP? CUP 19-15, special use permit for the annual waterfront market event between Giovanni's Market and Stacks Wine Bar with the amended conditions that the vendors be asked nicely to park in a <laughs> very convenient location near the and, and uh, then it be included, and it'd be included in materials that the applicant passes out to the vendors, yes. and be included in the uh, materials that are passed out to the vendors. Okay. Also, uh, if the um, if the uh, applicant would pr please present um, their findings to the commission after the conclusion of the last event of the year. Yep. Okay, so we got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Okay, um, let's call the question. Commissioner Lucas? Aye. Commissioner Stewart? Aye. Commissioner Barone? Aye. Commissioner Ingrafia? Aye. Chairperson Lohr? Yes. Uh, okay. Motion passes 5 0. <laughs> okay, th thank you. And, um, you know, bring as many new entrepreneurs on as you can from as local as you can. And Good luck, sir. And leave no footprints. <laughs> 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 okay, so, um, Scott, can we just have a discussion item on the. Yes, I, 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 yeah. So I think, so a couple ways to do this. Um, I, it depends what you want me to bring back. So you talked about the next meeting. Uh, it gets a little more difficult if you want an analysis of the conditions of approval brought back and, um, uh, and some analysis as to things moving forward. Um, I would suggest that if we do that, you give me the discretion to pick the date that it comes back. Um, because we have items coming up on the next agenda, you have a couple of them on that one. The following agenda, you have the Atascadero, which is the first one in February, is Atascadero Hotel. That's a big item. Uh, I'd rather not have it on you know, that agenda, so that we'll probably be looking at the second one in February. Um, I would be happy to, um, between now and our next meeting, uh, to reach out to Mr. DeGarmore, tell him what's going on, uh, and then tell him we're going to have that you know meeting to discuss the CUP at that you know second meeting in February, likely um, to review the CUP, um, and then I could give you a report back at the next meeting as to you know what the conversation was like with Mr. DeGarmore, um, and so you at least to get a little idea about what his you know take was and what he had to say about that. So I'd be happy to do a report back um, on that. Okay, my, my feelings, I'm happy to go that route. Okay. What's the, the rest of the feelings? I'm happy to go that route. I'm just 
not really wanting to wait 45 days to hear back. I'm wondering if there's uh, no. We're going to be hearing back in the next the next, next meeting. meeting. Yeah, yeah. So That's I'm going to reach meeting. out to him, tell him this is an issue, and now we'll just be tracking what's going on there. And the expectation is, I don't want the thing closed while we're doing all this. It's going to be open and that type of thing. That'll be part of the conversation that goes on. But letting him know that you know we've talked to you before about this, and you, and you haven't held up. So the planning commission, you know, is going to be bring, we're going to be bringing this back your conditional use permit back to the planning commission for review. And so at that meeting, we could, in fact, find that he is in violation of his condition use permit and then find against him in that. Cor cor yes. So we would be looking at it for compliance. You know, we're looking at issues like the gate that I suggested, um, removal of. Um, that seems to be one of the larger issues. And then it's saying whenever you want to close the thing down down there, that you need to reach out and go through staff to do it. You have to clear, have to clear the thing with us ahead of time, because I mean, it hasn't. I mean, those are things, those are options that we'll bring forward. I mean, that, it's not fully developed. This is me talking to you, right. um, but that's the type of things I would bring back as solutions because we've already had conversations with Mr. DeGuermore and he's not complied. So, um, I think it makes sense to you know come up with some options to make sure that he complies and you know make it strict. Um, I think that's probably the best way to go, and we need to sort of work through that on our side. And like I said, we're picking the second one in February because I think the first meeting is going to be the hotel, and the person that's going to be writing the staff report um, for that for that item is Cindy Jason. Then she'll also be writing the one for the compliance on the waterfront. She's our waterfront guru. I uh, tap her on the shoulder for stuff there. So that would be, you know, if, I, if you will indulge me, that would be my recommendation, um, how we would move this forward. Um, I would, uh, though, like you to, you know, make a motion in a second and, and that type of thing, giving me that direction, if you're comfortable with it. If you want me to do something else, let me know. No. Uh, included in that motion, I want, to, I want to see both access points, you know, evaluated. You mm -hmm. know, the, the south side needs eight foot of clear, you know, minimum. I think we're, we required five foot access but the present present day requirement is eight foot of eight foot of access and right now there's about there there isn't any literally so okay uh so let's have a motion uh, are we ready for a motion on that is everybody in i think so so it sounds, like, it sounds like we want a motion that says uh please bring the conditional use permit for the cup that is between giovanni's and stacks uh, back to the commission for the second meeting in the February yeah. to review ac uh, coastal access. Yeah. And the harbor lease site. And the harbor lease site. Yep. yep. Second. Okay. Uh, discussion on that? Okay. Uh, can we, Scott, you want to query us? Commissioner Lucas? Aye. Commissioner Stewart? Aye. Commissioner Barone? Aye. Commissioner Ingrafia? Aye. Chair Lewer? Yes, please. A motion passes unanimously, 5-0. Okay, thank you. Okay, that's the public hearings. Uh, new business, I think we just had it. Um, <laughs> anything else? We don't have anything else on the agenda for that. Unfinished business, we don't have anything stated. So, planning commissioners' con uh, comments and future agenda items. Anybody have anything else? So, I just have one. Thing. Okay. I just wanted to say I apologize for being late. It had to do oh. with my my institutionalization of uh, my other job, <laughs> <laughs> which will also impact next meeting where I won't be uh, here because of the academic senate calendar change that changes my teaching assignment okay. day to the the day that I'm here. Uh, but I just want to say in regard to the access, you know, one of the great things of of having lived in Morro Bay now for for 20 years is seeing the extraordinary things that have happened on the waterfront mm -hmm. with access and the, the individual land leaseholders that have come in and made major structural repairs and, and reworking to make this thing accessible. It's just really dramatic to bring visitors and walk them through this pathway. And it, it, it's really critical that the, the people who are the leaseholders understand that that, that, that path is, is really one of the great pieces we have here and and anything that has that kind of discretionary almost arbitrary you know blocking of it is is something that we're going to take very seriously and at least I do and I, I'm it, it's hard to hear this over and over again yeah 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 you have one comment yeah, yeah sure um just kind of a general comment um with accessory dwelling units so the 
every jurisdiction in the state is struggling with accessory dwelling units right now, um, trying to get their hands around what's what the rules are, what the rules aren't. Um, state keeps changing those rules as they as uh, on the fly. It seems like by the day there was another uh, Senate bill that got passed Friday. So uh, um, for everybody out there that's you know designing or thinking about designing or thinking about building, um, you know, understand that. The rules are changing. The rules are continually changing, and I was hoping to maybe re-touch uh, on the topic of fire sprinklers at some point. Um, I know we had talked about agendizing that in the future, so maybe if we could uh, find a spot in the next couple months to talk to Chief Knuckles about uh, what we can do to protect our community. So. Yeah. Do I get head nods <laughs> on that? I would agree. Yeah, I, I'd actually be happy because we did change the requirements with the local amendments to the new code. So, okay. Yeah. And then, Scott, uh, I just have a question on uh, uh, we had mentioned before that we would have the EV chargers. I didn't see them on the, uh, on the consent calendar. Uh, for that, where are we where are we in the well, so we so that? we um, uh, we've submitted for a grant. Uh, we've been in contact with the folks that it, uh, that produce the units, um, and we're just waiting to hear back on the grant. I think it's uh, we're supposed to hear back in the next couple of weeks. It's supposed to be before okay. the end of January anyway. Um, our uh, maintenance supervisor uh, Mike Wilcox is the one that submitted the grant, um, and I initially was meeting with the folks that would be, you know, providing the units and helping us, you know, do those types of things. But Mike's got it under control. This is the, type of, this is the kind of stuff he does. So, um, right. but once we hear back whether we get the grant or not, then I'll report back to the planning commission about where we're at and what the status is because we've met with them and we've identified locations where we're, we're, we'd like to put them down on the waterfront. Um, kind of exciting, and so we're hopeful to get the grant so we can at least put a couple of them in. Um, right now, so that's what we're, you know, that's what yeah, we're that's, hoping for. And so, yeah, it's exciting. It's probably one of the things that we can do that would most impact, you know, our ability to uh, to mitigate climate change here. So, you know, that at at least. Well, and you'll be getting, like I was mentioning, the hotel Atascadero Hotel project will be coming yeah. forward uh, in the first meeting in February, and they have seven or eight, I think, on that project, including oh, fast chargers and regular. So, uh, so we're about to, you know, maybe get several of them. So, well, it's nice. Great. There were there was a three hour three hour wait to get to charge at Madonna. <laughs> you know, in the Tesla. Yeah, that that you know, that over the, the location over there is jam packed yeah. uh, because of the location. I think next to the highway right there, people get off and that type of thing. It's just 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 full of cars waiting to get in there to to charge up. So yeah. No, not yet. They have some. Th yeah. They've got they level spots. I don't know if they actually. Charging. Yeah, they got level level two, not level okay. not level three. And then, wouldn't it be nice to have those people trapped here to wander <laughs> on the Embarcadero and go to the. <laughs> the restaurants and shops <laughs> yeah, just to follow up on that you know at, at cal poly i think we have 12 and they're busy almost all the time I'm, I'm lucky to slip in in the afternoon very late when some of them become available but uh, yeah they're we're going gonna, all the time if we could ever pave the uh, rock parking lot and put some out there then <laughs> yeah. it might, might, have, might be in business but. so we also have scott we also uh, you know i i read i this may be the bill that you're talking about ab50 i think is what it was yeah, yeah. where uh, they're talking about the four story and five story and six story mm -hmm. um you know buildings by right if it's within a transit a yeah, transit area and a half mile of a transit stop i think or yeah I was like, yeah so there's if you know people need to to voice to their state officials <laughs> yeah well, well, there's not gonna be a lot of discretion involved on our part when some of those things come through yeah it's they're you know the state's serious about housing yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, you, when you get some of the legislatures coming from larger cities, they're like, who cares about five-story buildings? Yeah. So, yeah um, we do. We don't have any of those, <laughs> uh, you know, other than the power plant. I mean, so, yeah, it, it, it's a huge change for small cities like us. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see how things play out and, and what backlash there is for some of these things as yeah. we move forward. So There's, a, know, there's another I'm, – I'm sorry, Jeff. I was going to say, it, it, it seems to take that notion of one size fits all to ludicrous – Lengths. Yeah, I, I mean, I could, I could, I could see, uh, you know, delineated by population size. Perhaps cities of a hundred thousand population or greater. Yes, but for small, and, and think of all the, the towns in California that are smaller than than Morro Bay, and how ridiculous it would be to have a, a five yeah. or six story building. 
you know. Well, State, yeah. Bill, State Bill 50, if I, I mean, I read the synopsis, I didn't read the bill, but I mean, it sounded like they were maybe realizing that the one size fits all doesn't work. Like, you know, like they thought it was going to work. And, you know, if we have, uh, you know, arterial uh, problems with our transportation, you know, transportation getting in and out of the city, then that would be a mitigating factor for things like that. So that's what I thought. I said. There's also some better definition. So one of the issues is, you know, def definition of a transit stop. Yeah. Right. And so that's where you, you might get in there, because I think, you know, one of the definitions that was in there previously was you had to have at least um, if it was a bus stop, you had to have at least eight. Uh, it, was a, it was a time frame on how how um, often they had to the buses had to run, and so that was one of the limitations. And I think that was one of the things that um, SP fifty was picking up was part of the definition um, thing. So we're still working through all of the uh, the legislative changes and kind of getting our head around what all the requirements are, and uh, because we have to incorporate a lot of this into our housing element that we're, yeah. <laughs> that, we're that we're getting ready to oh that we're in the process of updating right now. So um, yeah, we're going to be chasing this a little bit in like. Uh, Commissioner Barone said it's a moving target. I yeah. mean, we, we, honestly, from the staff standpoint, we just got to throw it up our hands because it takes us a long time to amend stuff. It's not just through the city. We have to go to the coastal <laughs> too, you know, and that's a six month process, you know. So it's, you know, we can't even keep up. Like every time we take something to them to try to, you know, like, oh, we get it through our process here. We've done this twice now. Then they change the rules again. As we set it off the coastal, and we're like, Okay, you just ignore it, send it back. We, we'll try to again. It's just, you know, it's, it's frustrating on our side of things anyway. And Scott, there was also the, the bill that was going to allow four units on an R1, R1, each R1 parcel. That was moving through committee or was it allows three vote? right now? The, the, well, the junior ADUs. Yeah, the junior ADUs. This was uh, four full residences without uh, parking yeah. on each. Yeah, the one that we have lot. right now, the one that we, the, it's in place now, it's in effect currently would be single family home. ADU, and then a junior unit. And the junior unit, what's the restriction on the size on that? Or is there? Uh, there I, I don't know if there's a restriction on size on it. It, it I think has it to did, be part of the original footprint. It has it? to be part of the original footprint, and, and, it, uh, and they don't have to have full cooking facilities, I think. It might be, yeah. And they can, sh and they can yeah. share things with the internal. They could share a bathroom with the, with the internal house or not. Yeah. There's options with it, I guess. Okay, it's a moving target, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, so Scott, do you have anything you'd like to add? Or? Uh, just to reiterate, um, I have you know one yes. I want to go to the Planning Commissioner's Academy from uh, Commissioner Barone. I, the rest of you have not weighed in. Um, it is, uh, I'll remind you, March 4th through the 6th. Uh, so look at your calendars. I will ask you again next meeting. Um, uh, it probably would, you know, by the end of February, I'd want to, you know, get that locked in. So we're still got hotel rooms and that type of thing. So, yep. yeah. Okay, then uh, at this point, unless anybody has anything else to say, we'll adjourn to the next regularly scheduled meeting at uh, Janu on January 21st, uh, 6 p.m. at uh, the Veterans Memorial Building here at 209 Surf Street. Thank you very much, everybody.